All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kemp. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 30, The Function of the Red Pyramid, part three. So in today's episode, I am finally gonna debut a spectacular animation that was produced as an unbelievably generous gift by a friend and supporter of the land of Kem by the name of Wally. So Wally was one of the first people that bought a digital copy of my book when I first published it two years ago. He was one of the first followers to the land of Kem Instagram page and one of the first subscribers here on the land of Kem YouTube channel. And Wally and I stayed in touch over the past couple of years and became friends. And he surprised me completely out of the blue a couple of weeks ago with this amazing animation that demonstrates the function of the red pyramid. So Wally also has a channel here on YouTube. He's been traveling to Mexico and South America to research all of the temples and pyramids of both of those countries. I will leave a link to his channel in the video description below. So if you're a new subscriber to the land of Kem on YouTube, or if you're not familiar with my theories on the red pyramid, I highly recommend you check out the series of episodes that I produced here on the channel that describe the function of this structure, starting with episode four, the function of the red pyramid part one, episode 11, the function of the red pyramid part two, which contains the original animation that was produced by my friend Alan from the Sacred Geometry Decoded YouTube channel. What's up, Alan? Thank you for producing that original animation. It was awesome. I'll leave a link to your channel also in the video description below. We then go to episode 15, my 2021 research expedition recap, which has exclusive photos and videos from inside of the Red Pyramid during my last research trip to Egypt. And finally, episode 19, the pressure capabilities of the Red Pyramid, an incredibly significant episode when understanding the capabilities and operation of the Red Pyramid. So Wally, thank you so much, dude, for making this animation. It is unbelievable. I think that is it for the intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go with tonight's episode. So this is a picture of me from my 2021 research expedition to Egypt having just finished with our exploration inside of the Bent Pyramid. And I was super excited because we were about to begin our journey inside of the Red Pyramid, which you can see here behind me in the distance. And this is just a picture of the spectacular Red Pyramid rising up from out of the ground like the apex of a giant shining crystal. This is an absolutely spectacular structure to see in person, and I highly recommend if you get a chance to go to Egypt, definitely go to Dashur and get inside of the Red and Bent Pyramids. And this picture just shows the northern face of the structure, and this is the modern entrance to the structure which you utilize to access the internal chambers. And these, ladies and gentlemen, are just a couple of diagrams that show the internal components of the Red Pyramid. I hope that by now all of you are very, very familiar with the configuration of this structure. But for any of you that are not, these are the internal components and the description of those components that are inside of the Red Pyramid. So let's start here with the reservoir intake valve on the eastern side of the structure. This valve was utilized to move water from the reservoir into the internal reaction chambers of the Red Pyramid. Here on the northern side, you see the northern pump shaft, which was utilized to manipulate the water level inside of these structures and to push the reaction from chamber one to chamber two to chamber three. Now inside of the pyramid, you can see that there are three main reaction chambers. You have your primary steam reformer, your secondary air reformer, and your final synthesis chamber where your ammonia solution is being produced. And this is just a close-up of those three reaction chambers. As I mentioned before, you have your first primary steam reformer, the second chamber is your secondary air reformer, and your third chamber is the final synthesis chamber where your ammonia solution product is being produced. And here is the specific series of chemical reactions that were occurring inside of each one of these reaction chambers. So you can see here in your primary steam reformer that methane is being reacted with water to produce hydrogen and carbon monoxide. Those two gases are moved from chamber one into chamber two, where they are reacted with oxygen and nitrogen from the air. The hydrogen and carbon monoxide react with the oxygen and nitrogen to produce hydrogen, nitrogen, water, and carbon dioxide. 
the water and carbon dioxide byproducts are removed from the system by dissolving them back into water. And then your hydrogen and nitrogen are pushed into the final synthesis chamber. The northern pump shaft is activated to push the water level up into the upper vault of the final synthesis chamber where that nitrogen and hydrogen are reacted to produce ammonia gas. That ammonia gas is highly soluble in water and will dissolve into the water inside the chamber producing an ammonia solution. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that I've explained the series of chemical reactions that were occurring inside of the reaction chambers of the Red Pyramid, allow me to formally present to you the spectacular animation that was produced by my friend Wally. But before I do that, let me just give you a couple of notes about this animation. So this thing was produced completely independently without my feedback, and it is not perfect. Wally gave this to me as a surprise and unbelievably generous gift. And after I watched it, I just didn't have the heart to ask him to make any changes. They put tons of time and effort into this animation. And I was so unbelievably grateful, overwhelmed and impressed by the quality of the animation that I simply couldn't ask him to do any changes. A, because it was a gift <laughs> and secondly, because it was free. So it is what it is. And I just had to share it with you the way it is now. So keep in mind that it doesn't show the fluid dynamic system that is involved in moving the gases from chamber one to chamber two, and it doesn't really show the surface adhesion that's involved in moving these gases into the second chamber. When the gases go into the second chamber, the animation shows that the water pushes the gases up into the upper vault. However, that's not exactly how it works. The gases will rise into the upper vault first, and then the water level is raised. This mechanism helps prevent the gases being pushed prematurely from chamber two into chamber three. So just keep in mind that the physics and chemistry of this animation are not perfect. However, I was so happy with it and it perfectly demonstrates the concept that I've had in my mind for all these years. And so I just had to share it with you the way it is now. So Wally, thank you so much. It means the world to me that you took the time to do this and it perfectly demonstrates the concept that I've had in mind all these years regarding the function of the red pyramid so without further ado ladies and gentlemen the function of the red pyramid
you enjoyed that animation that demonstrates the function of the Red Pyramid. So before I proceed to close with tonight's episode, I just wanted to mention something about the modern industrial revolution. So in my research regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, I stumbled across what could be called a conspiracy theory that relates the modern industrial revolution to the function of the Egyptian pyramids. And I believe, and I'll be covering this in a later episode, that all of the developments that were discovered during our modern industrial revolution regarding the production of chemicals on industrial scale can be traced directly back to the Egyptian pyramids. So you can see here the configuration of the original apparatus that was designed to produce ammonia. And you will notice a very similar configuration to the configuration of the chambers of the Red Pyramid. And I do believe that this apparatus was designed as an homage to the place from whence it came and all of the modern processes that we've developed for the production of chemicals on an industrial scale can be traced back directly to knowledge that was extracted from the Egyptian pyramids by studying and attempting to reverse engineer these miraculous structures. And just a quick reminder that limited First edition print copies of The Land of Chem book are now available at www.thelandofchem.com. So if you'd like to help support the channel, just go to the website. You can pick up a copy of the book, grab yourself a t-shirt. Either way, all of the orders mean more to me than words can possibly ever describe. So I will simply say thank you. All right, everyone, that is it for tonight's video. This was episode 30, The Function of the Red Pyramid Part 3. One more time, thank you so much to Wally for helping me make this animation. This is exactly what I had envisioned when I started writing The Land of Chem book five years ago, and I am so unbelievably grateful that all of my hopes and dreams for this project are finally coming to fruition. This animation is just a small preview of what we have coming up soon, so just stay tuned. To all of the new subscribers here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel, I really appreciate your support. If you like the video, please leave it a like. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, leave it in the comment section below. I really enjoy interacting with everyone and hearing what you think about this material. If you want to help support the channel, thelandofchem.com, if you want to pick up a copy of the book. I think that is it for tonight's episode, <laughs> so I will see you next time.